you know, I just wanted to gauge your mood from the other night. You know, Shaka sounded pissed, quite frankly, on the post-game Zoom call, uh, to put it nicely. Um, how would you describe just how that thing was internalized? Um, just a lot of credit to Baylor. Um, they, they play really well. I, I think they executed their scout report really well. Um, we, we would, um, like the thing with Baylor, you can't let them get on runs. They go on these like 11 to two runs, 10 and 0 runs. And that's where you start to get in trouble. And they had a couple of those and it, it started to get out of reach, not out of reach, but when you let, uh, you know, those pile on top of each other, uh, it makes it harder for, for us and, you know, going, not defending as well as we should have having 17 turnovers and then going 21% from the free throw line, you put yourself in a tough position to, to be able to, you know, to fight and have a, you know, a close game down the stretch. Do, do you guys feel like more than anything else um, right now, y'all just need, to, you know, just a few more, some more practice days back together again, past COVID, uh, everybody kind of get back, get back in the regular groove. Uh, I think it'll be it'll be good uh, having everybody back, having you know been together as one as a as a whole again. Um, <laughs> just having more more practice days under is more you know more time to just get guys in shape and you know all the little things that you know that equate to winning. Get your boy. Dustin McComas, go ahead, please. Matt, you guys have obviously been through, you know, you've been here a long time, been through a lot of ups and downs, but never anything quite like this these last three weeks or so. Uh, what's just been the conversation amongst these guys, especially guys like you and Courtney, those leaders that make your voices heard on the team, uh, about handling all these just challenges that have come y'all way the last couple of weeks? Uh, just staying positive. Um, taking advantage of, you know, days like today. We got everybody practice let's get better take advantage of this opportunity and like, there's a lot of games to be played ahead a lot of winnable games a lot of games that we could lose if we don't come prepared um but at the end of the day it's just staying connected you know around one goal like our goal that we we said at the beginning of the year and just continue to preach you know day in day out um but just but just still staying connected and still having confidence in one another because there's like i said there's a lot of games to be played it wasn't too long ago you guys were having some extreme highs and it just went from talking to you guys you never seemed like you were too high about what was happening understanding that there's this is a big picture type of thing is that kind of helping you guys right now you think just kind of absorb some of these lows the close losses the COVID issues the Baylor game and to kind of keep you guys on track you think yeah I mean that's funny you say that like I made a statement before the game yesterday or not two days ago just saying when things are going well, just don't get too high. When things are going low, don't get too low. Uh, just stay consistent, stay patient, and just stay with, stay uh, trusting with, in what we do. Uh, but like I think that's, a, that's been big throughout the whole year for us, uh, is just handling any adversity, you know, if it's good, if it's bad, whatever comes our way, and just being able to handle it, find a way to get over it, and just keep moving forward. And I think with, you know, what's happened these past two weeks, I think this, this is the biggest time to, to show and show and prove. Chris Tavares, go ahead. Hey, Matt, how hard has it been to get any sort of a rhythm going with, with this team, with this program? Because, I mean, two games canceled. You play, it's a close loss to OU. Another game canceled. All, all these cancellations and, you know, two losses thrown in there. Does it feel like there's you guys have lost any rhythm or flow that you had earlier in the season? I wouldn't say we we lost any rhythm. I do think it's 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 different when you you know and this it was like last practice so it was the first time in 19 days we had our whole team you know um, not to say we lost any rhythm but you know when you hit with adversity like with guys with COVID. Um, you know, your coach, missing your head coach, that, that does play a factor in just, you know, in your your team, like what you started with in the beginning of the season into now, like anytime for any team, that, that's it's going to be a difference. 
Um, but now I just think it's like, okay, like it happened. Um, like let's accept it and let's, let's get better. Let's, let's move forward. And, and now like, as we're whole again, or, you know, whatever you want to say, it's just, it's just time to take a, take advantage of, you know, every, everyone that we have in this locker room. How, how important given all of that and, and you know, it hasn't been back-to-back games because of the scheduling, but losing two in a row, how important does this Saturday at OK State become? Uh, it's just having a mentality that uh, next team on our list, um, we just have to we have to come ready to compete. Both teams are coming off losses, uh, so both teams are, are going to want to win. They don't want to have a losing – to continue a losing streak. So it's just coming in with a mentality like, okay, like we lost these past couple games. Now we have to come out even better. We have to respect the scout report even more. We have to take practice more seriously uh, leading up to the game. So just buying in on the details and, you know, taking advantage of, you know, having a, a full roster, a full team. Brian Davis, back to you. Yeah, man, I, I just want to, I just want to put a bow on this topic. Um, you know, you were quarantined, a whole bunch of guys were quarantined, the coach was positive, all that. I mean, did you ever think to yourself, man, I, I don't know if we should be playing these games? Uh, I, I had like a little thought like, man, because uh, you've seen like some teams would just, they would just shut down their, uh, you know, their basketball, they would just pause all activities until they were in full health. Some people decided to play, you know, through it. Um Maybe there was like a little thought, maybe like, oh, maybe we should just, you know, pause that activities and just wait. But at the same time, I was thinking, I was like, I think we still have enough here. Not that I think, I, I feel we have enough here to to still get things done and to still win some games. Um, but everything was just a learning experience. It gave other guys opportunities. Um, it allowed people that were sitting out to see the game from a different perspective. Uh, so like, I, I, I use this like this, you know, that that time as a, like uh, a learning experience, a stepping stool uh, for what's soon to come. You know. and, and just real quick on OSU, um, you know, Cade obviously is continuing to to be be Cade. Um, just what, what have you what have you seen? Uh, I don't know how much film you've watched in their last couple of games, but just how do you think they're different now than than the first time? Um. I think K gets a he gets really aggressive, you know, in the second half. I seen uh, just watching him play and seeing the statistics, the stats. Let me just say stats. The stats on him, uh, right? And his second half stats of how he his uh, his aggression increases and uh, him getting to the line and his percentages. Um, but I think it's just it's a team it's a team game it's a team performance. We're going to guard him with all five. Uh, we need to trust our principles. And, you know, we know it's going to be a, a very good game. They played us close here, you know, first conference game, um, one by three. So we know that, you know, going at OK State, that's a, it's a tough place to play as well. You know, not no matter if it's 25 percent fans, no fans or they have the whole thing packed. It's a tough place to play. So you got to come in and respect them and just, but just buy into what we do. Courtney, what's up, man? How are you, bud? Uh, how are you? I don't know. How are you feeling is the more of the question. Um, uh, after you, after your interesting experience, oh, uh, it was a good experience. Uh, I didn't really have any symptoms. I was just pretty much bored the whole time. But it was good to be back. <laughs> yeah. I, well, then let me let me ask you the same thing I asked Matt. You know, um, everything that y'all have gone on the last couple of months. Did you have you thought? Have you thought? You know, I I don't know. I don't know if they should be playing these games. Um, selfishly, I didn't want them to play without me. But I mean, I, like Matt said, I feel like they had enough to beat Oklahoma. And yeah. it was a good game. They just made more plays uh, than us at the end of the uh, day. But yeah. it was a good learning experience, like Matt said. More people got to play and step up in different roles. So that's going to be good for our team in the long run. Did it kill you to watch on TV? Yeah. I almost broke my TV a couple times, <laughs> a couple of plays. But no, it was a good experience. <laughs> Dustin McComas, go ahead. Speaking of breaking your TV, Courtney, you're a guy that's not afraid to, to make yourself heard, your voice heard, your actions heard. What have you been telling your teammates during these last few weeks? I mean, you guys start off so great, uh, a couple of close losses, and then Baylor comes to town, 
you right. having all these other issues around the program, COVID related and things like that. Just what are you telling these guys? You've been around this program a long time. You've seen a bunch of highs and lows. What's your message to them? When I was away, I was just trying to uh, just, just tell them to uh, just play hard. You know what I'm saying? And just attack each and every day. It's kind of hard to uh, lead when you're not there because you don't know everything that's going on. And then it's after the games, I just gave like positive and I just gave negative for things that these players could have did better in my eyes. Now I let them talk and we just went from there. And just being back now is just trying to bring the energy that I had before I left and just bring that leadership, you know what I'm saying? And it's going to be, I ain't going to say it's going to take a while, but I still have to get back in shape. I was off for two weeks, you know what I'm saying? So I have to get back in the group that I had before the COVID. But I mean, the biggest thing I can do is just continue to be a leader and just continue just to help my teammates the best I can. And something you guys have mentioned a lot is the word maturity and increased experience with, with this team. Do you do you think you guys are equipped to handle this sort of just these very unusual circumstances and everything that's been coming at you lately? I mean, you've had some highs early on, mm-hmm. you've had some things out of your control and things like that and some close losses. Why do you think you guys can handle all this and, and kind of find your footing again? Because we're an older team. Uh, majority of our guys are third-year players who've been around for a while. I think the younger people – are gonna lead, they're going to ask us to uh, lead them. I think that's how it should be. Uh, unfortunately, we lost the last couple of games, I think two in a row, yeah. So we just got to go in Oklahoma and stay with the mindset of uh, just doing whatever it takes to win. You know what I'm saying? We can't be perfect. There's going to be mistakes throughout the game. We just can't let our mistakes just build up, build up, and allow teams to go on big runs. And that's, what, that's what I think Baylor did. They did a good job with this, uh, building off our mistakes and just capitalizing. Chris Tavares, go ahead, please. Courtney, for for you personally, for the team as a whole, how frustrating have these past two or three weeks been with cancellations, two straight losses with canceled games in between those, and just the the stop and start feel of of these past three weeks? Well, it's been very frustrating. Uh, When you're on a groove and then it just seems like, oh, I have to start over again. It's it's tough for a basketball player, but we're big boys, so we got to do it. You know what I'm saying? We knew some games were going to get canceled throughout the year. We didn't know who's going to catch COVID at certain times. And then it's a part of just growing up. And then the team who handles it the best is going to be the team that wins the national championship. At the end of the day. Does does it feel like you guys have lost back-to-back games? Does it feel like it's been more because of the cancellations? What does it feel like with, with these these recent struggles? Um, it felt like we lost to Oklahoma and then Baylor. I don't feel like it's been too much more. You know what I'm saying? We just got to get back on track. We start some practice today of just attacking practice, paying attention to film, then having a good lift session. I just feel like we have to bring more energy. I just think we this is where it starts. So we're just going to have to do that today. And then tomorrow, then attack Oklahoma State Saturday. Thanks. Brian Davis, back to you, sir. Hey, Courtney, when, um, uh, when, when Tuesday night was over and you guys came in Wednesday and the anger, you know, once you get past the anger of losing, uh-huh. What specifically bothered you about the defense? I just felt like they were very comfortable. I didn't think we made it hard enough for them, uh, uh-huh. starting with Butler and Mitchell. I think they just felt comfortable the whole game. And I kind of felt like it starts with me. I feel like I could have did a better job of just, just making them feel uncomfortable more, uh, uh-huh. especially early in the game. I just feel like when you allow good players to feel comfortable early in the game, it just carries on the whole game. And then it just it proved that they were hitting a lot of shots. Uh, a lot of contested shots over base, over guard. So once you get in a group as a good player, you feel like the basket is wide. And once you feel like that, it's hard to stop. Them. Is is that is that sort of the main indicator um, of of both their offense and your defense? I mean, they they pulled up and they were shooting over Jericho and Kai like like they didn't care. <laughs> you know, um, you just have to you have to just do more. You know what I'm saying? It's just mm-hmm. make them miss, guard them harder. Yeah. Uh, it starts today. You know what I'm saying? And film. Like, no man should have no excuses. We all was there. We all saw what happened. And we just have to move on from it. Uh, today is a whole new day. Only day to get better. We will get better. And it starts with me and Matt and practice and Andrew being the older three guards of getting out to people. I think we have to start back doing that, just getting out to people, holding people accountable for their actions. Dustin McComas, please. Yeah, Courtney, speaking of that, a guy I know you guys have held accountable early in the year was was Jericho, trying to get more out of him. Mm-hmm. I think you're getting that on rebounding defensively and things like that, his effort level and his toughness. But the free throw shooting, I'm sure, has really frustrated him. What do you say to a guy like that that you know is putting the work in 
that, you know, wants to make the free throws, but, you know, he's getting to the line. He's just not knocking them down. I feel like the biggest thing there, you can overthink it. You can psych yourself out. Like, I have to make this free throw. I have to make this free throw. I feel like he should just go into it like, I'm going to shoot the free throw. You know what I'm saying? Uh, if you play with the, uh, if you play basketball, trying to force yourself to play perfect, it's not going to go perfect. And then when it does, when it doesn't go perfect, it just puts you way lower. I just feel like he just has to just trust his work that he's putting in on the off days, on the uh, free throw line, and just with his game, and everything will go well for him. Do you think you guys have kind of lost that a little bit as a group, just kind of just because of all the people coming in and out and the lack of practices? Just that, don't worry about perfect, but just go out and just attack the game. I wouldn't say we lost it. Uh, it's been kind of different not being able to practice and not having a whole team, like you said. Uh, yesterday wasn't a good overall team performance, uh, but we can't dwell on it. We got to move past it and just grow from it. I feel like we will grow from it because we're a good team and that's what we always do.